Hey, welcome to our, our Seller Size event. Appreciate your being here. Looking forward to sharing some exciting new material with you and getting back some of your comments. I want to thank you for the support we've received this week, um, especially for the app. In fact, I wanted to read, uh, read one of the uh, comments and let you know that we're continuing to work on the app so we make it better and better, and we will be making it better and better. And we thank you for, again, uh, sharing your feedback. has been really motivating and exciting. So this is from Meryl Lee. Thank you, Meryl Lee. She says, hi there. First, I want to say I love the app that you recently put out. Using the various workouts create interest, keep me motivated, and have really made a difference in my fitness. For some reason, having a workout is different than just jumping. Don't ask me why. This being said, I have a request for you, and I appreciate the request too. At one point, I came across a video where Dave Paul was explaining how to do different isometric holds while jumping to build muscles, especially in the arms. Since then, I can't find that video anywhere, and there's nothing like that on the website either that I can find. Possibly, he talks about these positions in his exercise videos, which I do in Subtle Size, The Ultimate Exercise. But I haven't bought those, so I don't know. But I think that they should be incorporated into the app somehow. I do my own positions that seem to have an effect already, but I think it would be helpful to have them combined with different or certain types of movements and be able to select them in my own program to remind myself when to do them. I'm not sure I'm the only one that would appreciate seeing those upper body tips in the app. No, I agree with you. In fact, one of the advantages of putting together the app is that we can do additional modules or movements and there's there's many, many more that I want to be able to introduce that you will be able to apply into your own, your own exercise routine. So, Meryl Lee, you're right. Um, I will be doing that. We'll be doing uh, more specific movements that will target different areas of the body, shoulder problems, hip problems, knee problems, uh, and then uh, another one that, that's going to have a whole slew of movements that we'll, we'll save for a little bit later. But I appreciate the comments. And we want to welcome everybody who keeps commenting and coming online and thank you. And I hope you've had a chance to, to share this with those people you love and care about. Um, we've had a lot of people who, who uh, got involved with uh, Father's Day and purchased them for their, for their fathers or their husbands. And we're going to deal a little bit with some of the interests that men have a little bit more tonight too. Perfect. Do you mind if we do a quick shout out to some of these oh, people? Oh, please that have do. Us? Yes. All right. So I'm going to apologize if I've missed you, but if you let us know where you're from, we'd love it. I've seen Angelia on there. I've seen Sarah on there. Vitor, Sherry's there. Pat's with us. Rita's with us. We've got Joan with us. <laughs> Come back on there. It scrolls really fast across my screen, so I apologize if I've missed you, but we're so happy to have you with us. Also, if you have a pet pending, pet, bleh, I cannot speak tonight. <laughs> I a thought you were going to talk about pets because pets are right? good. You know? <laughs> a question pending, maybe, and you haven't had a chance to ask us and you're with us and you'd like to ask us, go ahead and post it and we'll be sure to get that answered tonight. And I want to thank, uh, you, you brought up, uh, reminding me of something. I want to thank those of you who have been sending in pictures of your pets on the solar sizer. I totally relate to that. I I had, and I think I've explained it before, I had a ferret who used to jump on the cellar sizer and jump up against my leg and then lay down on the, on the spring cover so that as I was moving up, it would just lay there and it enjoyed the movement up and down. And we've had cats and dogs and uh, other animals that have uh, used it as well. So it's, it's good for the animals too. Real quick, we've got Faye and Ronnie and Robbie that have all just joined us quickly. And let's get to some of these questions let's if you're it. okay with that. All yeah. right, I'm going to put these on because the, the text is a little small. And then for me. today, for those of you who are just tuning in, we are going to be demonstrating some of the movements you do with the balance bar. And the balance bar isn't just, a, it's a balance bar initially when, when people get it who, who might need it for that additional support in their balance. But after they've become more balanced, then it changes from a balance bar to a performance bar. And when you have it and you're utilizing as a performance bar, you can actually create more leverage and get more use out of it and more benefit than you would if you didn't have the bar. So we'll talk about that tonight. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. 
All right, so happy Father's Day, Dave, and to the many fathers uh, with our Seller Size family. Yeah. Is there a fitness tracker that is most compatible with Seller Sizer or at least a jumping activity? We're going to be working on one of our future events with the Apple Watch and putting together programs for that. But initially, really, just get a counter. Put one on your ankle um, or, or if you have a watch that will count steps and just seller size. It'll count the steps, it'll count your heartbeat and you can see um, what those results are. Eventually we'll offer something but right now you don't need to wait for that. You can utilize some of the other products that are available um, to you. All right. They also asked, if we're into a steady seller sizing routine and we need to stop to run to the bathroom one, two or 10 times and we return right away, do we need to do the warm up again or could we get right back to where we were? Oh no, you can get right back to where you are. Once you get the, the movement up and down, you're massaging all your tissues. And this is something really important. I'm glad you brought that up. For athletes and athletic performance, often you will see them go out there and they do the stretch movements. Stretching can actually be damaging. You're taking muscles and ligaments that are tight, that may be cold, and you're stretching them and you can tear them and you can cause injury to yourself, which can impede your overall performance instead of enhance it. Literally, one of the better ways and options that we are encouraging um, people who are involved with physical fitness and activities is to get on the cellar sizer and just gently move up and down. As you're gently moving up and down, you're moving fluid through all the tissue and you're taking the tissue and the cells and you're massaging them. The cell membranes are expanding and contracting and as they warm up, you'll automatically become more flexible. Now, after you've done the cellar sizing, which is priming the body, and throughout, it's increasing flexibility everywhere, then you can go ahead and do your stretching because now your body truly is warmed up. And after you've done your stretching, I encourage people to get back on the cellar sizer, move up and down because it promotes homeostasis. My daughter has been working on the splits and she's got the side splits down now and she's trying to do the the front split and she's getting pretty close and by cellar sizing and then stretching and then cellar sizing again you're helping the body to adapt faster get rid of any swelling or inflammation increase circulation promote faster healing while you're also improving your flexibility that's great all right all righty okay Dave, my family came over this weekend and got on my cellar sizer. They got dizzy just doing the health bounce and that should go away, shouldn't it? Yes, it should. <laughs> okay. Very common. A lot of people, when we live a horizontal existence all day long, gravity's pulling down, blood vessels shrink, the brain is settling in the skull and all of a sudden, we haven't been jumping up and down for several years, some of us, and then we start to move up and down. Well, the brain moves up and down and the movement up and down starts to increase oxygen blood flow more circulation to the brain which i believe is vitally important especially in the culture we live in today but that movement up and down simple movement increase that circulation open up the capillaries well initially when you first do it yeah you might feel a little um, disoriented but that goes away within a couple weeks and your circulation improves the connective tissues firm up on the inside surrounding the brain and you can become more aggressive. Okay. She also went on to mention something about herself. As for me, the Jamba Run is melting me away, but my <laughs> Heine is going too fast. Uh -huh. Don't want to stop because I have more weight to lose or should I, or is there something new to try? Okay. You're, you're going <laughs> through what I went through. <laughs> um, the Jamba Run's incredible, guys. That's another you know, testimony of it. It increases metabolic processes and of course it burns fuel. If you do a lot of it, it can, uh, it, it, it'll burn it anywhere you've got it. So for the buttocks and once you've been, cause this is exactly what I went through. Once you've gotten to the point where you've lost so much weight back there and you want to build that back up, that's when you do the leaning forward movement and you, you just kick your legs out behind you. And as you kick your legs out behind you, that starts to lift, tighten, and tone that buttocks area again. But yes, you may have to lay off the jamba run a little bit um, because it's very, it's, but keep in mind, 
generally with the body, and this is a good thing, generally with the body, if you burned off a lot of the weight in the buttocks, there's not any more weight there to burn off. The body still needs more fuel. So it's going to look at it in other areas of your body. It generally will burn off the fat before it's ever going to start, start to burn off muscle. So your sounds like you're headed the right direction. If you have more weight you want to lose, sounds like the Jamba Run is, is working very effectively. Now the body's going to have to find more fuel. And once it's gone back here, it'll find it somewhere else. And everybody's genetically predispositioned a little bit differently uh, so that they store weight in different areas of their body and they burn that weight in different areas of the body first or second or third. So sounds like you're doing really well. Okay. All right. If you decide to use your cellar sizer outside, it would be nice to have a waterproof cover for the handlebars and, to cover, and a cover for the cellar sizer to protect it from the, de the dirt, the debris, and the inclement weather. I think it would look really cool if you, that would happen, but I would love to have the cellar size out on my deck. Is What can they do since we don't have something? <laughs> yeah, we don't have something. We can't make something um, because not enough people, I have a feeling, would, would make that worthwhile. But something you can do is take a tarp, get a good sized tarp, tie a couple anchors on two of the ends and then just drape it over and put a couple weights on the other end when you're not using it. And then when you're ready to use it, uncover it, just flip it over, solar size, flip it back and that, that will help keep it cleaner and uh, let, less exposed to the sun. Perfect. All right. Two questions, stress and continence. As we're bouncing, do we hold the pelvic floor muscles tightly or tight and relax, tight and relax? You know, th that's, a, that's a very common question. And the sphincter muscle doesn't, if you're not very active, it doesn't get a lot of strengthening um, or, or weight-bearing exercises on it. So it can get weak if you've had several children it can also become stretched out and, and weaker. So we want to build up that muscle just like we would any other muscle. So by doing an isometric where you tighten, which is good, and, and then bounce, you have an isometric with an isotonic. And even if you're young, this is a healthy movement. You tighten and then bounce, it adds more weight to that sphincter muscle. So go ahead and hold on to it. You don't have to release it while you're bouncing. Hold on to it while you're bouncing. That's an isometric, bouncing isotonic to build up the muscle. So that has over time helped countless numbers of people. So. Okay. I'm unable to wear a bra because of back pain. I'm on the small side. Do I need to use some support in order to have some things move north rather than south? <laughs> That's a good question. Reminds me of the lady that uh, made the comment as I was hitting Midlife, I felt like everything was headed south, and now that I've been cellular sizing, I feel like everything's headed north again. There's a lot of truth to that. The body becomes more resistant to the weight. There's protein fibers that run through the breasts, and if you're not overly well endowed, then yes, you don't need to wear something because you don't have a jarring impact when you come down on a cellular sizer like you would if you were running on the ground. Running on the ground can cause a jarring impact that can cause the, those protein fibers in the breast to actually break and then nothing other than surgery is really going to be helpful. And that, a lot of people found that out when running and aerobics became real popular and unfortunately it was too late, too little too late. So wearing some support is a good idea if you can. If you can't and you're not overly endowed, what will happen is it still firms up the breasts. Um, I know with my wife the same thing happened and, and she experienced it and I could tell too, because it's a protein, protein fibers. Now, if you're well endowed, you do want to wear support. The reason for that is because the breasts are moving up, they're weightless, and then they're coming down. You're coming down and the, and, and the breasts follow. So that too much movement is, is not healthy on, on those breasts because the breasts themselves are having too much movement. So helping to support them while you're moving up and down helps those 
connective tissues, that fascia, the protein fibers actually firm up in the breast to support them more, more and, and to strengthen them. There's another exercise you can do um, for the chest area, especially for breast reduction somewhat too, and that is to do the movement where you are pushing in. You're using the muscles around the breast and the muscles burn off some of the excess weight, but it's just a simple movement where you're pushing in, it's working the shoulders, upper chest, and as you bounce, and then you're bouncing up and down. So now you've got the muscles in play, you're bouncing up and down, the muscles need more fuel, and they start to burn, tighten, and tone the chest. And the same thing happens with men. If men get a little um, soft in the chest area, doing this movement starts to burn off the weight and tighten and strengthen those muscles in the, in the chest as well. All right. Okay, we've had a couple of questions that have come across the screen, which I are fun. Oh, good. So, hyperthyroidism and cellar sizing. Mm -hmm. Cellar size stimulates the thyroid, it, uh, it, but it also um, stimulates the, the entire endocrine system and the adrenals and the, the chemical balance within the body as well. So, as you're moving up and down, the moving up and down has been known to create healthier balances chemically within the body. Balance is not just physical. When we do the strength and balance test, that's physical. It's also chemical. And when the body is able to communicate more effectively, we're getting rid of the stress, the tension, we're opening up the circulation, we're weightless over 100 times a minute. And when we're weightless at the top of the balance, that's when the communication channels are cleared, they can flow more effectively, the body can communicate more effectively. We've gotten rid of the stress, the tension, and the blockages that build up um, over the days from gravity alone. So that movement up and down, again, is like taking a jar of water with a bunch of dirt clods in it. Walking it around like this doesn't do much. The moment you do this, you break up the dirt clods. Well, it's going on inside the body too. You're breaking up the blockages. You're helping the communication system work more effectively as well. So it's a good question. Okay. So there have been several that have said that they really want to firm up their arms. Uh, okay. There have been quite a few posts out on Facebook as well that I've noticed of people that have taken what they call the cellar size challenge yeah. and have built just their arms up yeah. just through the cellar size and I found mm -hmm. it very effective. Yeah. So I think they just want to see if you won't mind demonstrating some of those yep. arms and I think they benefit the men. They, yep, they there you go. Okay, this is for the men. And again, it's not, they're not, they're not, I'm not bodybuilding. They're not really big, but they're strong and they're, they're flexible and they're quick and they're healthy and that's what we want in a good healthy muscle. So th this is literally what I do um, on this cellar sizer to build up, up the arms. And, <laughs> and I don't do it that much. I mean, if I wanted to build them up bigger, I would do it more often. And the neat thing about what I'm about to share with you is you're not tearing down the muscle to build up the muscle. It's totally different from typical exercise where you target specific muscle groups. You're gonna be targeting this muscle, but you're also gonna be collectively working the entire body with more weight all at the same time. So it makes it more efficient. It's all weight bearing. And, and keep in mind again that the cells of our body, they don't care where the weight comes from. They don't care how sophisticated a piece of equipment is. You can spend thousands of dollars on all kinds of exercise equipment that are not going to be able to do what the cellar sizer can do. But because the cellar sizer is not thousands of dollars, people often think, well, it's not going to be as effective. That's not true. Cellar, I haven't, I've never found ever a piece of exercise equipment that offers more versatility and more benefit than the cellar sizer can because it's working from the inside out. So with that in mind, if we're working the arms, and, I, and I've shared this on previous DVDs, but this, this is it. I count to the count of four and I move up and down, pushing down and pulling up at the same time. So I count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And as you're pushing down and pulling up, and then you do the other side, pulling up. 
and you're pushing down. So you're working the ladies too. You're working the back of the arm as you're pushing down and you're working the front of the arm as you're pulling up. And you, you, you can do variations of that. But that's, that's for the arms. That's for the front and the back of the arms and the wrists and the forearms and the whole, that whole arm movement. Again, moving up and down, resistance. You will feel it. You will feel it. <laughs> By the time you get to 20, they should be burning. If you want to go to 30, occasionally I'll do that. Um, you're going to feel it burning more. And they get, they get pumped. You're pumping the cells. You know, people, when they look at me, they think I've been pumping weights. And I tell them, I have my own over 100 times a minute. <laughs> it literally is. It's not just weight lifting. It's because weight lifting limits the effect to the muscle doing the lifting. It's weight bearing, which is far more inclusive of everything. Muscles, bones, connective tissues, ligaments, tendons, skin, collagen, protein fibers. They all have weight on them. So that's good. Okay, so I think we're ready to show how to put the bars on. Yeah. And then go from okay. beginning to advanced with the performance bar and then all talk right. about men. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you how to take that balance bar off and put that balance bar on. Because there's some of you have indicated you're not as comfortable as you'd like to be doing that. And so taking, I'll show you a couple ways. This is, we demonstrated this before. And if I take, what I do is a little different. So I lift this up with my foot and I push down at the same time and the bar's off and I can go set it somewhere. When I put it back on, I simply lift it up on edge like this. For this streamlined bar, you go to the right of the hinge Make sure the hinge is in the middle where it folds in half. Go to the left of the hinge and I simply pick the bar back up, slide it over the legs about an inch or so, drop it down. If you have to stomp on it, you can, you can stomp on it. Put the feet back on. It's that simple. It really is. Now, when you're taking it off, if you don't want to take it that way, take it off that way, just simply lift the unit up on edge like this take the rubber feet off, grab the bar, and just get a quick little tug, and it slides right off. So hopefully that will be helpful. Now with the bigger bar, you're gonna do the same thing. I don't know if they can see that over there or not, um, but I'll show you. I'll show you with the bigger bar too. So with the bigger bar, you're going to take, and most of you know this, but you just take the bigger bar. You're going to go to the right of the hinge, take the rubber foot off of that leg, go to the left of the hinge, skip the first leg, go to the second leg, and just do the same thing. You're going to slide it over the leg about an inch or so. Just kind of drop it down, let it go all the way through, put the rubber feet back on, and you're ready to go. Now, with the larger... I'll show you this because I'll, I'm going to change this back to our streamline. But for those who aren't quite as thin to get through the streamline bar to sit down and bounce, the, the wider bar is just fine. We can sit down on the bar and we can do this on both of them. Grab the little uh, rubber handles here. If you're not able to stand up, or those who aren't able to stand up, they can grab the rubber handles here. They can grab up here, whatever's comfortable, and start to just gently bounce up and down. You can grab the top. Now the bar is adjustable to three heights, so you can actually pull it down some. You can be bouncing here. When you drop the balance bar, when you want to make it shorter, take the entire bar off first, and then it's easy to move the pins. If you try to do it when it's on the unit, it can get torqued and get stuck. But when you take it off the unit and then adjust it, very easy. Standing or sitting down, you can actually do little pull-ups at the same time. You can regulate the amount of movement by bouncing up and down. So you put a little bit of resistance on the arms. Or you can do it the same way this way. And that's, that's some resistance. 
but that balance bar has plenty of room um, in the middle. I'm going to put the streamline bar back on. So again, this is how I do it. And you can see it, you know, it really, it takes less than 20 seconds to, to do this. Normally. <laughs> And then grab it, drop it down, put the feet back on. Not that, doesn't take that much time to put it on and off. Okay, so a couple things, and this is good for men. When we're starting off, as I mentioned earlier, the balance bar could very well be for balance. It gives you additional confidence. So you can put a little more, more effort into your routine without falling off. It has not so much to do with age, although people who are older who haven't been challenging their balance, they'll start to lose their balance. And as I've mentioned in the past, balance has little or nothing to do with age. None of us are born with it. It is a physiological function. We challenge our balance by moving up and down, challenging our vestibular balance, challenging proprioceptors, doing different movements. We can get and improve our balance at virtually any age, and we do. So standing here, gentle health bounce is great. You're lifting the heels up and down. It's working the calf muscle, very comfortable. You pull the bar toward you, it stiffens up. The bar is loose generally, and people often say, well, the bar's loose. It is, until you pull it toward you, then it's pretty stiff. But if it was stiff all the time, then you become dependent upon the bar for your balance. I want your balance to improve, to get better and better in everything you do. So by having the bar balanced, you'll find that as your balance improves more and more and more, you will put less and less weight on the bar, and you won't even realize you're doing it. And then you'll go off and do some activity where you have all this balance, and you're just like, where did this come from? Why is this so easy now? because you've challenged your balance and coordination skills from cellular sizing. So this movement up and down, excellent. Uh, doing the gentle twist when you're getting started, great. Jumping side to side. Again, it's giving you confidence to put movement into your routine without falling off. Now, as you get stronger, then it graduates from the balance bar to the performance bar. If I want to really work on the stomach area, the entire stomach wall, not just parts of it, sit-ups are very limited in the stomach wall. When you cellular size, you work the entire stomach wall, all the way up and down. The moment you tilt, that's an isometric. These muscles are now tight. They're holding me up from falling over. Well, on the cellular sizer, we can hold on to the balance bar, leveraging weight to the abdominal area while we're jogging. Without the balance bar, we wouldn't feel as comfortable jogging at an altered angle because we might fall off. But holding on to the bar and tilting, the moment I tilt, I just put a lot more weight right here and I can lift my head up and I'm very comfortable running like this. I would not be comfortable, even me, running like that without having the performance bar to hold on to. For the, oh, and then leveraging more weight is simply kicking out like this. And as I hold on to the bar, I can tilt back further. And as I tilt back further, I am leveraging more weight here. The rest of the body is always involved, but I'm focusing on this area of the body. For the waist and the hips, same thing, hold on to the bar and just kick out side to side. So as I'm kicking out side to side, I'm leveraging the weight right here and I can lean further, kicking higher. Don't, don't overdo it when you first begin. You know, it takes time. Remember, it takes time for the ligaments and the tendons to become more flexible. You don't want to pull anything and you don't need to. Remember, we don't have to work out on the cellular sizer. We play on it. It works on us. So 
taking out side to side. For the lower back and the buttocks, we're leaning forward, and you can do it with one hand or two, and we're just, you can see how much further I can lean forward, having that bar to support me. Well, that additional lean creates more leverage and more work on the lower back to strengthen those muscles and the buttocks. So again, it's just, that's what it is. It's a performance bar. Um, when you want to take it off, you know how easy it is to take off. And then for those who might want to try something a little different, jump roping on the cellar sizer. You don't want the balance bar on this, but when you jump rope on this cellar sizer, see how many jump ropes you can do. It's fun, but it's intense. I remember my daughter, <laughs> she may be watching right now, Jenna, she's on our website. Um, she answers a lot of the, the chat room. She challenged me to see if she could beat me jump roping. And of course, at that time, um, and this was over 20 years ago, <laughs> I think I can still do it. <laughs> but but I, I had to beat it, right? And so I did a little over 300 jump ropes continuously. And, and I, when I was done, I was like, wow, wow. That was an incredible aerobic activity. I was, I was amazed. Um, you can get the weighted ropes while you're doing it, and it, uh, it helps as well. So men, chest pushing in this way, pulling out, arching your back, pulling out for the shoulders um, as, as well as uh, the arms, um, doing these movements. This is, these are the things that I do up and down. And then loosening up shoulders, again, men and women, men especially because a lot of men are lifting a lot more heavier weights and they're leveraging the weight and, the, and, and it's hard on the shoulders. Now it's the same thing, women can do the same thing. But doing the, those shoulder movements that I showed on one of the previous uh, routines, don't overdo it because you will feel it if you do, but it's, cellar size is very forgiving. But it's cupping the arm underneath, just kind of stretching that shoulder a little bit and then gently bouncing. And you can feel the movement as it's starting to loosen up those muscles and ligaments increase in that flexibility in that shoulder. And for people that have had shoulder issues, some of these movements will be in some of the new modules that we'll be doing movement up and down um, on the cellar sizer. Another one I usually do when the bar is not on it is to do jumping jacks. And I want to talk about that just briefly because a number of people have done jumping jacks the traditional way. And the problem with doing that on a cellar sizer is if you're doing jumping jacks like this, you can land on the spring. Landing on the spring can fracture it. And over time, that can cause the spring to break. In over 30 years, I have never broken ever one of our springs. And I use it all the time. I got my unit that I was on uh, Sunday, yesterday. Um, 16 years, it's been outside in the sun and the rain and the snow. I'm bouncing up and down there while I was barbecuing. And it's, it's fine. If you land on the springs or jump too high and land too close to the spring, you can land on it even without knowing it and fracture a spring. So for the jumping jacks that I teach, and I, I think I've showed this to you before, I'm going to take the balance bar off. I hope sharing that balance bar, putting it on and off helps. But this is a jumping jack that I do, and it's every bit as effective. It's just like this. So the arms are coming up and down over my head, and I'm just kicking my legs out behind me. But it's keeping my feet more centered toward the mat. So I'm not worrying about, about the springs. I hope some of that helps, has given you some ideas. Go ahead and feel free to share your feedback with us. It's made a huge difference. It's an honor for me to be a part of your lives. 
and I'm grateful to have you as part of mine too. So thank you, Christine. Anything else you'd like to share? Um, just one question that was asked. Yes. If the grip on the seller sizer bar happens to somehow get ruined, mm -hmm. can they replace those? Yes. So they just need to call in and mm -hmm. order those. Okay. Just give Perfect. it a call. You'll be spraying a lot of soapy water on it. You'll take the piece off and then you'll, when it's really wet, you'll slide the new foam over okay. in place of it okay. after you've cut the other one off. So I think that's all the questions that were on Good. today and thank all you right. for your demonstration. Christine, thank you. Perfect. And remember, you don't have to work out when you play in. Thank you.